Good morning, everyone. Something happened yesterday, and I recorded my story, which is actually the next poetry book, and I don't know what happened to the video. I think I must have deleted it before it went into the folder somehow. Anyhow, happy Thursday. So I'm sorry we've missed Wednesday's story, but I don't think it'll matter. Uh, if I had a dragon. If I had a dragon, I would ride him into town. I would ride him up the streets, and then I'd ride him down. I'd ride him really fast, then I'd ride him slow. And he would take me places where only dragons go. There we are, all through the town. I bet you would love to have a little dragon, or a big dragon. Not too sure I would. Have to be a really good pet dragon. Poor monkey. Here we go. Poor monkey sat in a prickly bush. He sat down plop in there. Ouch, said monkey. It's not fair. I've been staying in the new nowhere. Uh-oh, poor monkey. No clothes. Oh. Birds have a beak, but they don't have a nose. Birds have a claw, but they don't have toes. Birds have feathers, but they don't have hair. And birds don't have any underwear. The birds look pretty surprised there, don't they? The other birds. I wish I were a butterfly. The little bird said to butterfly, I wish that I were you. I wish that I could fly. Please show me what to do. No, little bird, said Butterfly, I can't show you how to fly. You only have a cage, and I have the sky. I feel a bit sorry for that big bird. I hope he's got a bigger cage than what it looks like on the picture. Bad mood rhino. I'm going to show you the story, the picture first, because he's a pretty big rhino. If you look at his face, you can tell he's in a very bad mood. Rhino was cross, Rhino was mad, Rhino was grumpy and rude. Don't go near, stay away, Rhino's in a really bad mood. That would be a very, very cool picture to draw. I love drawing, do you? Peas make me sneeze, they always do. I put them in my mouth and I go, ah, choo! Quick, under the table if you hear me sneeze, or you'll get zapped with flying peas. Oh dear, he's got peas splattered on his glasses. That would not be much fun. We're supposed to sneeze into our elbows, so they shouldn't go that far, should they? Lumpy bump. I saw a lumpy bump in my bed. I saw claws and a tail and a furry head. And I had to sleep on the floor instead, just because... A lumpy bumps in my bed. Well, I don't think I'd give my bed up for a pussy cat. I think the pussy cat would have to sleep under the bed. Or maybe on a rug on my bed. Did you know? Do, do you know? Have you heard? I found an egg of a dodo bird. Don't tell anyone. Don't say a word. I'm going to hatch a dodo bird. Now there's something you can look up and find out what a dodo bird is. Hmm, there's lots of things you can do with these poems. Even write one yourself. Something in my pocket. I have something in my pocket and I can feel it squirm. It's slippery, it's slimy. Yuck, I think it's a worm. Oh, that would be horrible. I'm finding lots of worms in my garden. That's the right place for them to be. Definitely not in your pocket. Elephant sneezed, achoo, achoo, what a horrible hullabaloo. Trees went flying and animals too, a cow, a goat and a kangaroo. What a horrible hullabaloo when elephant sneezed, achoo, achoo. There's another sneezing story. What have we got there? Have we got a cow and a goat? And a dog or a cat? I think it's a dog. And there's elephant. Oh my goodness. 
That would be pr oh, actually it's two goats. No, it's not. Look at the right picture. It's a dog. Shoe hippo shoe. Oh my goodness. A hippo climbed onto a bus and everybody made a fuss. Shoo, they shouted. Shoo, shoo, shoo. This is a bus. It's not the zoo. You could change that one and say, an elephant climbed onto a bus and everybody made an awful fuss. Shoo, they shouted. Shoo, shoo, shoo. This is a bus and it's not the zoo. How about you try and add an animal into there and write your own verse? Hmm. And that's the last one. So remember these ones here are buddy books and they're written by Jill Eagleton. She's a very clever story writer and also a teacher. Okay. Now if you're listening to the stories from the Bible in order, remember yesterday, or the day before, the story before was when Thomas had, was doubting that Jesus was who he said he was, or the, who the who the disciples said he was and he needed to see the holes in his hands and his feet and the, and the hole in his side where the soldiers had pierced him with their sword to make sure that he was actually dead so this next one is called Jesus forgives and restores and here's Jesus on the beach and those are the disciples his disciples in the boat let's start three days after Jesus died on the cross he came back to life more than once, Jesus appeared to his disciples and proved that he was alive. One day, Jesus met his disciples while they were fishing on the Sea of Galilee. Peter and the other disciples got into a boat and spent all night on the water. Because that's what fishermen do. They go out and they fish all night. Well, some fishermen, but it's meant to be better in some places, actually. Anyhow. The next morning, oh, I'll go back again. They did not catch any fish. The next morning, as the sun was coming up, Jesus stood on the shore. He called out to the disciples, but they did not recognize him. Jesus said, men, have you caught any fish? No, they answered. Put your nest in the water on the right side of the boat and you will catch some fish, fish Jesus said. The disciples did what Jesus said. So many fish were in their net that they could not pull the net into the boat. How amazing. One of the disciples said to Peter, It is the Lord! Peter tied his clothing around himself and jumped into the water so that he could swim to shore. The rest of the disciples travelled in the boat back to shore and they pulled the net full of fish behind them. When the disciples got out of the boat, they saw bread and a charcoal fire with a fish on it, or with fish on it. Bring some of the fish you've caught, Jesus said. So Peter pulled the net ashore. It was full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. Come and have breakfast, Jesus said. Jesus took the bread and gave it to them. Then he gave them the fish. This was the third time Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Jesus turned to Peter. Do you love me more than these? He asked. Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus asked Peter again, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Take care of my sheep, Jesus said. Jesus asked Peter a third time, do you love me? Peter was very sad that Jesus asked him a third time. Peter loved Jesus very much. Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep, Jesus said. Peter told Jesus that he would bring honour to God. Then Jesus said to him, follow me. There's a question here. Why do you suppose Jesus asked Peter the same question three times? Asked the after the first time, and Peter said, I do love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. In the next one, Jesus asked again, and he said, take care of my sheep. In the third time, he asked again, and, and Jesus said, feed my sheep. So it was feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, and feed my sheep.
Who are the sheep? Is he talking about the four-legged ones? I think Jesus is talking about his people who believe in him. And he's telling Peter to take care of them and to make sure that they're okay and that they learn, learn more and more about Jesus. When Jesus first called the disciples to follow him, he had promised to make them fishers of men. Instead of catching fish, they would tell people about Jesus. That's in Luke 5, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. The disciples had left Jesus when he was arrested and even denied him. He was a, But Jesus still wanted to use them in God's plan. Jesus is the Lord who forgives us and makes things right again. So that story comes from, because I forgot to tell you that, John chapter 21, verses 1 to 23. So I hope you're enjoying the story still and still listening in. Um, it is quite a, not important that you listen to them all in order, but with, with the Bible stories I've been reading since before Easter, that helps so that you can see what happens on the way through. Okay, we'll see you again tomorrow. I'll try not to miss a day. Bye.